New potential cyclone taking shape near Madagascar on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for March 24th. Tropical Storm Neville is well and truly on its way out. It nearly is out, as a matter of fact, uh, after peaking a few days ago as a strong Category 3 hurricane equivalent. We also have the other area of interest that hasn't established itself as a cyclone yet, but is getting closer, 70% now, in the next seven days. It's 68 days until Atlantic hurricane season, and it's pleasing to see that there is nothing even remotely forming. But there is a large uh, frontal system moving through off the US East Coast uh, that will be affecting Bermuda around about now and up through the Canadian Maritimes. 51 days until hurricane season in the eastern Pacific and it's generally quiet. A few clouds here and there in the tropical zones. Hawaii may be getting just a little bit of rainfall and uh, apart from that really very little in the eastern Pacific. The Westpac has a few thunderstorms blowing up over the Micronesian Islands and maybe towards Palau but in general it's extremely quiet there and a similar story for the North Indian Ocean as well just a few thunderstorms really across the whole basin in the southern hemisphere then Neville there well off over the open waters of the southern Indian Ocean Australia the northern and eastern reaches uh, are receiving quite a few thunderstorms there today as well um, with a bit of cloudiness trailing along towards the south <clears throat> and towards the west then this area of interest 70% chance now it is really starting to look like it's going to be our next big thing and it could go on to affect Madagascar significantly and still a significant threat as well to the Mascarene Islands next week uh, or later in the week as we go along here in the southern Pacific really nothing much to look at here just a few little rumbles uh, but in general there is nothing expected to form here So today we're going to take a closer look at this area of interest then in the southwest Indian Ocean. There it is. It is 135 kilometers from Agalega, which is part of Mauritius. I may have said the Seychelles yesterday. The Seychelles further north there. Uh, Farquhar Island is actually in the Seychelles. That's to the west there, 610 kilometers away. But Tromeline is actually slightly closer at 516 kilometers. And to Laha, Madagascar, 764, and Mauritius itself at 929 kilometers away from the this system. It's going to pull itself closer definitely but will it actually strike Mauritius and Reunion? That's going to be the big question and how strong. Well let's check out the satellite imagery. It's uh, still quite messy at the moment but you are seeing little signs of rotation starting to uh, manifest. It's uh, going to tighten up the south and southeastern side first of all and then it will be the northwestern side that will need to be doing some catching up that's where the weakness will be and you can already see signs of that on this imagery cloud tops looking decent and certainly we're not looking too far away from it becoming a tropical depression and definitely it is producing a lot of rainfall under all of that convection and it's not moving very much at all so some of these areas around some of the Seychelles and uh, Agalega uh, could be receiving very high amounts of rainfall and we'll take a look at those rainfall estimates shortly. There's some old imagery actually, that's um, Mateo Sat 9 which is a bit broken at the moment and there's some microwave imagery showing just a little loose uh, trend there of rotation especially on that southern side. Here's Neville, a shell of its former glory obviously, uh, the southeastern side still got some decent amounts of convection and I'm still uh, pretty sure that this is a tropical storm just for a little bit longer. The Bureau of Meteorology has given up on it now uh, but we're giving it 45 miles per hour at this juncture, uh, but looking at that convection there, starting to drift away, the circulation not looking so decent anymore, it's all, it start, looks like it's starting to come apart. Uh, so really it is very much on borrowed time and it will most likely lose its status in a matter of hours. Water vapor not looking very good there and the cloud tops are almost completely giving up, they're already far below what you would expect for this point. The rotation still looking decent though as we look at that microwave imagery 
no problem with that actually as we look at that imagery even though it looks a little bit decoupled now just a quick look at what's going on off the east coast of the united states a very uh, ferocious looking big band there throwing up moisture towards the uh, only towards the eastern extremity of new england now Look at the sea surface temperatures to the bottom right there, really dropping off a cliff off the coast of South America uh, and warming up though further north of course. In the uh, Atlantic, the Caribbean Sea is starting to warm up, 28 degrees in a few spots down near Jamaica, near Cuba, near Haiti perhaps. And in the Western Pacific, also getting those warmer waters, 28 degrees Celsius reaching northern Luzon now and also 26 degree isotherms just about reaching Taiwan. Looking towards the North Indian Ocean, it's continuing to warm up there as well, 28 degrees off the coast of Odisha in some areas now, as well as down in the Andaman Sea, extremely warm waters there getting up towards 32 degrees Celsius. Southwest Indian Ocean is piping hot for this area of interest, 29 to 30 degrees Celsius where it is right now, and that will persist for at least a few days, and it's around 27 to 28 near the Mascarene Islands. Off the west coast of Australia, still very warm waters to the north, but to the west it's still pretty cool. The, Car the Gulf of Carpentaria is still looking extremely warm even after Megan, around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius minimum. And in the South Pacific, still looking really good there as well. A massive hotspot there northeast of Fiji, over 30 to 32 degrees Celsius in one or two spots there west of Samoa. Interesting, interesting, and these are these sea surface temperature anomalies and a few deep cold spots there in the eastern Pacific, signs of that La Nina on the way, but it's surrounded still by warm anomalies. The western Pacific is around average, the southwest Indian Ocean is above average, the Australian region quite average as well actually, apart from the cold sea which is trending above, so I'd look over there for potentially our next system. And down to the south Pacific as well, that big hot spot there east of Fiji and Samoa. Oceanic heat content is also through the roof in that area and still very good amounts for the cold sea as well extending through the northern reaches of Vanuatu and Fiji. In the western pacific it's starting to creep up there as well it really is especially in those deep tropics but further north as well and in the eastern pacific a bulk of uh, good uh, oceanic heat content starting to build up there I remember last year peak season it was only just about the same. So let's check the GFS computer model then for the next uh, five days, first of all. Uh, watching this system starting to move southwesterly very slowly at first, then it starts to move a little bit more towards the south. Look at how fast it intensifies there in that small period around day three, day four. And it gets up towards probably category three, maybe even a shout of category four status in the next five days, which would really be quite remarkable. Watch it again there, it starts to barrel towards the southeast, it mainly misses Madagascar which would be good news for them. There's Neville really starting to drip down and then gets really caught up in that massive extratropical system to its south. It's uh, definitely gone as its own entity by the 27th, remnant low status and all. But right now it's still holding on to decent winds, but it will lose them quite quickly and then gain them back after turning post-tropical, as quite often occurs when a system goes to the extratropics where wind shear becomes a storm's friend by that point and it gets sucked into that massive zone. And look at this curious little feature off the coast of Brazil. There it is, very quick there. And that's only in a couple of days or less. A very quick movement towards the southeast. Brief development, if any. But something to watch out for there. It might be the kind of thing that Marina names over there in Brazil. But you can see it once again, a very small petite system moving southeastwards and then getting wrapped up in a, sh a slew of other extratropical activities. Rainfall expectations for the next seven days then, look at this carefully, this is on top of any rainfall that's already occurred and I imagine there's been quite a bit in Agalega. Uh, near where, near that area they could be looking at really massive amounts of rainfall once again over the next five days, approaching 40 inches in one or two spots. Along the coast of Madagascar, a few areas there looks like they'll receive 16 inches, 400 millimeters that is, and almost to that amount in Reunion as well now that it's winded and 
seven day period. For Mauritius, it's looking like they'll get away with it with only maybe three inches of rain, that's 75 millimeters, but look towards the north there, near some of those isolated islands, uh, could be, including Tromelin by the way, could be exceeding 30 inches of rainfall, which would be pretty astronomical, that's 750 millimeters, um, which would obviously cause massive inundation. Longer range, day 5 to 10, watch what happens now. The GFS is pushing for this storm to make a direct landfall on La Reunion and then moving southeastwards and starting to weaken. But that is a hurricane equivalent landfall on Reunion Island uh, as it continues to push southeastwards. The ECMWF has a similar scenario now as well and is also pushing for the storm to get much stronger than what it was earlier calling for. It's calling for a peak, probably as a high-end Category 1. The GFS looks like a Category 3 peak as we've seen with a category one or two landfall scan the barcode and that will take you through to the force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our products as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request we're still waiting for hone we are indeed get the shirt in the silly range this is day 10 to 16 uh, there is a little rumbling here from the GFS of a Western Pacific system. It's right at the end of the run though, so I'm not very sure on that at all. You can see a little bit of rotation starting there, moving through Palau actually as a tropical storm and actually stopping there by day 16. Very long way out. Uh, we're really doing this just for show. Not much uh, confidence in that one, I would say, at all. And the next thing we're going to show you is a similar story, but on the other side of the equator, a system that forms near the end of the run here in the Australian region, um, and it's just off the top end of Australia. You'll eventually see a little thing start to rotate. Is that the sign of it there? It starts to take shape there around the 8th of April. There it is, tropical storm status just off the coast of the Northern Territory. Uh, but once again, that is extremely long way out, and... I'm not so sure about that one, either of the silly range ones, because the models can change like night and day. Meanwhile, an actual threat on this day in 2018, it was Cyclone Nora, which was a Category 2, about to make landfall as it was curving along the coast of the Cape York Peninsula of Queensland. Uh, I remember this one quite well. We also had Iris to, the, to its east, the system that was uh, keeping us guessing for probably two weeks, I think it was. Uh, a weak tropical storm it only ever got to. And Marcus, what was left of it just off the western coast of Australia, of course, that was a Category 5 peak a few days ago on this day. That was 2018, six years ago. Back to this year and upcoming, the Atlantic naming list. The first name is Alberto. The Eastern Pacific's first storm is a letter. And in the Central Pacific, we are indeed still waiting for Hone, and it's getting exhausting. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Iwinyar. In the North Indian Ocean, it's Rimal. We are still pegged at just 12 storms so far this year, which is really starting to fall behind the average, although um, we've still obviously got a long way to go. Usually the seasons are quite reliable, and I reckon there'll be a flood of storms at some point this year. In the Australian region, the next name now is Olga. In the southwest Indian Ocean, it's Gamane, And in the South Pacific, it's Peter. And that's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll see you again tomorrow.